I'm Aisha. Welcome to I Heart Art. I'll be doing oil painting with you today. If you caught our last episode, you'll see that I did an underpainting and an oil wash. This week, we'll be working on uh, blocking in colours. So let's get started. I'll start off with the setup. I have my reference here on the right. Um, shout out to masking tape. I've used it to put some paper towels along the side here. And I'm also going to use it to tape down some more paper towels. Also, shout out to paper towels. What I'll be doing is I'll be using them for wiping my brushes. So that I can change colours between. Some people like to use turpentine to wash their brushes in between, but I like to use oil. Okay, I think that should do. So the first colour that I put onto my palette, which is um, a chopping board from Kmart, <laughs> is white. So I'll just add some in the top corner. I always like to add on the most white because I find that I use it regularly to soften and mute the other colours that I'm using. Then we'll go for cadmium yellow. So I try to go for the primary colours, that way we can make whatever colours we need. I do have additional colour paints like green and purple, but I don't like to rely on them too much. It's kind of nice figuring out which combinations make what colour. And then if I really need some green, I'll go straight in. So the next colour we have is ultramarine blue. There we go. And the next colour is crimson. Ali Zarin Crimson, I never know how to pronounce it. There we go. So once I've got my three primary colours, I have white and I'll also add in some black. I like to put that on on the end. And the only other colours that I like to add are different kinds of browns. So we have burnt umber, burnt sienna, which is what we use for the underpainting and the wash. It's kind of a warmer colour. Then I also like to add in sepia. It's a very dark kind of greyish brown can be really helpful when you're making shadows but you don't want to go all the way down to black. Back these way. Then we have a few different mediums that we can work with as well. So we have our lean medium which is to thin out paint and that's what we'll start with at the beginning. Then we have linseed oil which is a nice middle ground between thinner and thicker paint. Then we have our fat medium, which adds thickness to the paint, but it still gives room to have a little bit of transparency as well. So I think the first part that I'm gonna go into is doing the background wall. That way, once we get that in, we can start working on the figure and we don't have to worry about the overlap between the background and the figure. And then we can work our way out and we might end with the foliage. So I'm just gonna start blocking in colors and that'll be the second stage of the painting. And the final stage of the painting will be adding in all of our shadows and our highlights as well. So I might start with a bigger brush. Get some of the lean medium. And we've got lots of green in the foliage. And so to kind of complement it, I think the kind of white or gray that I wanna go for the wall might have tones of purple in there. So a little bit 
little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and a lot of white. We'll dip that into the lean medium, see what we can get. A bit more red. You can see we've got a nice purple going. So I use my palette knife to mix it up with the white. Maybe a, li a little bit more red and a tiny bit of yellow just to warm up this colour. There we go. Painting is very messy, it's terrible for your nails. You'll get colour everywhere. Just mixing it with the lean medium. We can start to go in. It's a very rough around the edges. We want to make sure that it goes right to the edge of the figure so that when we paint the figure over the top, you don't have any white space between. And you can see we don't need to fill in every single part of the page. We have the wash and the underpainting. It'll help us do a lot of the work as well. up into the edge. That'll give us some nice shadows underneath. Mix in some more medium, get some more paint on the brush. I always like to just brush over the parts where the gesso didn't fill in. Probably not a good idea because it means that the oil will definitely seep through, but that's okay. I'll keep working on my painting, but we'll see you after the break. You can see the colours changing slightly. It's pale up here and it's much warmer down here. It doesn't have to be uniform. Playing around with different shades, different tones, makes the image look a bit more dynamic. It's my favourite word to use when talking about paintings. Adding this much medium to the paint can be helpful as well. It keeps the wet for longer, which means you can blend in a little more later on if you change your mind about what it looks like. It's easier to fix up errors. I'm gonna get some more medium, but I realize you can't see what I'm doing here. So I just have a pen holder that I use for all my brushes. And then these two small ones here, what I use is I pour the medium in here and then I can dip my brush in mix it with the paint. And so in here I'd have the lean medium, which is the thinner one. And then in this one, it's empty for the moment, but later on I'd add um, either the fat medium or the linseed oil. And I'd use that towards the end of the painting. So I'll just pop that back in my trolley. I've gone through lots of different kinds of brush holders. And then suddenly I saw this and I was like, that makes more sense. Otherwise I have a, a separate palette for, for my mediums and a separate holder for all of my brushes, but it's nice to have them all in one place. I 
like to be a little bit warmer, so I'm going to add in a little more red and yellow. Mix in some more white. Just fix up the edges along the stairs. And I might go in with a smaller brush, so I'll put this here. Just make sure that brush is clean. Might dip it in the medium to give it a wash. fixing up the stairs and again with paintings it doesn't need to be perfect as long as what you're trying to get across is implied and people's imagination can do the rest of the work add in a little more medium slightly darker. Maybe I'll add in a little bit of the underwash colour as well. Let's mute it along where the shadow is coming up. No, I'm not too worried about the shadows just yet. So we'll have time to work on that later. For now, just blocking in colours. Okay, we'll keep working on this wall. So we're keeping the background layer nice and thin. Now with the foliage, it doesn't really matter too much. It's all gonna mix in the end anyway. So it can be really rough here. Marking where it meets the floor. I'm not sure what colour the floor is going to be. We might do this pale kind of brown, washed out brown. Let's see what we can work with. So I'll just wipe my palette knife and my fingers. <laughs> so the nice thing about palette knives is that you can cut through the paint and mix them easily. So I might get some burnt sienna, just a little bit to keep it warm. You want the brushed, washed out brown. So we're going with something darker as well and just mix it up to see what colour we get. That's looking okay, I think. Might try to scoop in some of the medium. Just make it a bit smoother. Then scrape off the back. Okay. Now I'm not going to clean the brush too much. I'm going to go back in. I think it's nice having colours from other part of other parts of the painting uh, coming up in unrelated areas. So if the purple comes up in the floor, I think that's okay. It helps tie in the wall and the floors together. Make sure we get it right to the edge of the skirt and underneath the legs. Then we'll go in roughly, do the rest of the stairs. Just 
softly blending. And again, we're relying a lot on the underpainting as well. These brushes aren't the best for oil painting, but it's what I had left at my studio, one of my clean brushes. Okay, there we go. One last section. We have this ledge here as well, so I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. So I mix in a little bit of sepia. With oil painting, it's always best to blend in the colors on your palette before you put it onto your canvas. If you watch all the tutorial videos, they'll show you that if you try to blend colors on the canvas, they end up becoming really dull. But if you mix them prior to adding them to the canvas, they really hold on to their color. So it looks like a better transition. Might have to add in a little more. Just so that it feels like it's part of the same fabric as the floor. I'm going to keep blocking in the background. We'll see you shortly after the break. I always go back and forth between the colours I mix. Sometimes it comes out right, sometimes it comes out wrong. I think that's the fun part about painting. Sometimes you don't know where it's going to take you. It would be nice to see some kind of streak, so we might add something like that. We'll see what it looks like. And then we'll block in our foliage. So I'll wipe my brush. This time we're gonna go in and make some green. So a little bit of blue. There we go. A little bit of blue to bring out the vibrancy in the green. And we'll start darker here. So this is just the base. And we'll mix the two colors, the lighter green and the darker green. So this is about blending the colors before you put them onto your canvas. Maybe have some lighter green here, catching some sunlight. Some more light green here as well. So again, there's not much detail. We're just blocking in colors. So we can see there's lots of shadow in this little section here. So we might add in some more sepia into our green, really darken it up. The tiniest bit of black just to help build that shadow. So making sure to remember to keep these layers fairly thin. So that's looking a bit too light. I might add some more blue. A little more brown. Maybe some sepia. And a tiny bit of yellow again. Thinning it out. It 
Any kind of crisscross motion is helpful when you're going to have leaves over the top. Because what you do is we'll get a brush later on and you kind of drag the paint up and let that dragging kind of motion define the direction of the leaves and the shape. You don't want too much detail with the background. Just remembering that some of our foliage comes off the edge here. Keeping it small and then bigger as we get closer to the edge of the page. Okay, so we've blocked in most of our colours. I think we've just got our tree left here. So we might get some, get some brown. Put it in our trunk. Come back in, add in the other branch. Again, remembering that two breaks off and then another two is added. And that's okay if they're all different shades. They'll give us nice shadows to play with. And in terms of leaves, it's a little bit more defined because it's on its own. What I might do is grab a smaller brush. There we go. See what this looks like. So we're not adding in the tiny branches just yet but we're just imagining that they're there So we might go in with some thinner branches. Yeah, we can put them in like that. So we're adding in another thin branch here. We can add in more leaves later. So we might leave this one here for now. We've done all of our colour blocking. Join us next time when we add in all of our detail and our highlights. Thanks for watching.